This is a screencast of showing the current state of the art for the physics derivation graph using a Neo4j backend for a property graph. Uh, the location of the code is on GitHub in the All of Physics graph uh, project under the proof of concept repo. And then there's a subfolder called uh, the, not the web interface here, uh, the property graph instance. So that property graph is the newer version. It's an upgrade from the, uh, the current JSON SQL based version 7. So the property graph is going to be the newer version. So we'll go ahead and check out a copy of that in the command line here. So we're going to copy that whole project. It takes a little while because there's quite a bit of data in there that has accumulated over the years. I already have Docker running. We're going to use Docker uh, to run the software in containers. So once I'm in, once I've extracted that directory, I'm going to cd into proof of concept and property graph. So that's the subdirectory that matters here. And I'm going to make show you that uh, I don't have Docker uh, images already running using Docker PS. So there, I'm not running anything. And I'm going to have to make a new secrets file. So I'm going to look for my Secrets. So I'm making a new file here. It's the .env, and that contains the key value pair secret key, and then some other string here, and you'll, you can set that as you see fit. So once you've got that, I'm going to run make up, and that's going to run Docker Compose down and then up, and that's going to build the software in a Docker container that includes Neo4j as well as the Python Flask application for the web interface. And so this will take a little bit of time here because it has to fire up Neo4j and that container uh, takes a little time to start. It runs its own uh, web server with an API and that's what we'll be launching against from Python and Flask. So uh, what I didn't show you uh, when I had done the checkout is that primarily uh, there's these four folders under the property graph. There's conversion data formats, there's deprecated Neo4j, and web server. And once this uh, container starts, it will eventually create an, another folder in which it stores the property graph on disk. Uh, so I'll show that here. So I'm in the same directory. Uh, I'm going to do ll. I'm going to see that proof of concept is checked out. And I'm going to go into property graph. And so uh, this new folder called dumping grounds is the folder that was created when I launched this container. So now we can see that the, uh, the container is running. It's got a web server one. That's the web server that we're going to use that's running Flask. And we're going to connect to port 5000. So we'll go to a web browser again, and then we're going to type localhost 5000. And hypothetically, this should render a Flask Python page um, with syntax that I've written up. Um, now you'll see that currently there's no derivations, no inference rules, no expressions, no symbols, and no operators. So I don't have an existing uh, Cypher database I want to upload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the existing derivations. There aren't any. This table has just headers. So I'm going to add a new derivation. So let's make up a name. It doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, and I'm going to add this derivation. It's going to immediately say, oh, well, you'll probably want some sort of step associated with that derivation, and a step requires an inference rule. Again, there are no inference rules, so I'll make a new one. I'm going to say, add something to both sides, and then I'm going to make some things up here. I'm going to add an inference rule. Now I have some inference rules. I'll be able to select this inference rule that I want to use for this step, and I'm going to uh, let me go back. Let me go back to the main page. I have an inference rule and a derivation. I'm going to go back to my uh, my one derivation that I have. It has no steps currently. Uh, I'm going to try adding a step. So you can sort of see this is already querying the Python, uh, this way, the Neo4j property graph. Add this step. Um, we'll click on, uh, I don't think this quite works yet. Click on edit. All right, so now we have 
We're going to make a note here. Every note after the step, add the step. Oops, I didn't like that there was no expression, probably. All right, let's go back and see if we can add an expression. So we'll add a new expression. This is something like do this one. Cool stuff. I'll add another expression. Say I'm super creative here. All right, so now we're going to go back to the derivation. Or maybe we should add some symbols. I'll have A. I'll add another symbol B. All right, let's go back to the main page. It's derivation. I'm not quite sure whether this will work at this point. Okay, so I've got this derivation. We're going to add a step. Uh, currently, this is the inference rule that's available. Okay, so now it finds that expression. Maybe this will work. Awesome. All right. So now we'll add another. Let's go back and add another inference rule. Maybe we'll just create a graph. So we've got this query. So we can't export to Cypher or JSON currently. So if I do click on those, I get an internal server error. And on the command prompt, what I see is uh, this APOC is missing the export Cypher command. So I'm not sure what that's about currently. I'm going to go into query the graph though. So I've got now one derivation. So let's uh, list the derivations. I've got that command sort of preloaded in here. And so this is the output when I query what are all the derivations. Um, that's the answer there is I created a derivation called that. Um, I can also, if I don't like uh, just clicking on links and I actually want to see what the, you know, some dynamic query, I can click on, I can click into this. Uh, search field and click on the search there. Um, yeah, all right, maybe that didn't work out. Let's try this one. All right, that's not very exciting. All right, so for some reason that clicking the links is working uh, so I can click all, all the nodes and all the edges. So those are actually in that. I'm not sure why the clicking or submitting a straight text didn't work out. Oh, here we go. Now we have to try this. There we go. So this text box is not working, but the URL, you can just submit your query string up there and that will work. So let's uh, yeah, those are the symbols, so let's see if we can list all the edges. I'll just throw this up here in the URL field. Yeah, so the URL field works. I'm not sure why the query graph didn't help look at that. Anyway, so what we've got is we've loaded some content into the derivation graph. Let's go back and undo all of our work by deleting all the content. All right, now we're back at nothing. I'm going to query the graph again using Cypher. i list all the nodes. There aren't any, so no string that shows up here. That's all the inference rules, there aren't any. Right? So this is, basically you've got a property graph, you can load stuff in, you can make both preloaded queries uh, down here in the links, and you can submit arbitrary queries up here. Uh, and that's what we're at right now with the physics derivation graph in Neo4j.